<laughs> okay. Recording. Hold on. Hit the clap. <laughs> okay. We got. We done clapped. <laughs> we Hi. did done that. And you did it with good strength, which is the theme of our new. Week. Oh, strength. We That's right. Have st and strength and discipline. Gevura. It's like both translated as discipline and strength so you sort of you could have been louder with your clap but you sort of withheld it but also it was audible exactly there was a, <laughs> we, we really exemplified the the discipline with yes that and and the strength and the might so yes we are entering a new week last week we focused on chesed and all the different aspects of that this week we focus on gevura and all of its aspects and so like last week we began with chesed of chesed we start with chesed again but now in gevura mm -hmm. so the love in discipline and strength. Let's see what kind of questions we have. The under, let's see, so this is what it says. The underlying intention and motive in discipline is love. So, okay. th like, why, why would you discipline somebody without the hope that they would get better, essentially? Yeah. I mean, this is something that I talk about. I actually just had this conversation with a friend recently, um, which is that I only engage, like, I only care about folks that I already care about, right? I only engage in both like negative and positive ways with people that I already care about. When I say that something has hurt me or that we shouldn't go in this direction or do something in this way, it's because I care. And also my self-discipline, disciplining myself is an act of, uh, of chesed, of compassion and love. Yeah, I, somebody, I just read recently cause someone on Reddit or something was like, what is self-love? I don't even know. And somebody else was like, well, it's kind of more like self-responsibility, like mm -hmm. making yourself brush your teeth and take a shower, what, like at least once a week and doing these things. And so there is discipline involved in that. And it's, so it's self-love and it's in just buying cookies and stuff all the time, but it is doing these things and taking care of yourself. Yeah. Like self-care. That That's requires that discipline. Absolutely. So, um, tolerance of people should never be confused with tolerance of their behavior. On the contrary, love for people includes wanting them to be the best they can and therefore helping them be aware of anything less than perfect behavior. I don't think anyone will ever achieve perfect behavior. Yeah. But there's got to be some ideal. I mean, I think about that graph. I forget what, what kind of function this was in math, but it's like the thing that continues to get close to the this limit. Like, oh, okay. Yeah, where it, it, it goes and it's, it's close to the limit, as, but oh, it will oh, never yes. reach zero exactly. Okay. Yeah. I wish I knew the word for it. Yeah, I know. It's a function. One of those like X over two or something like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, hold on. Do you want to get that? Uh, maybe. Hold on. <laughs> I'll turn off my computer because that's what's ringing. <laughs> Self-discipline. Mm-hmm. We can clap again. Good. I'll clap again when I get mm -hmm. back. All right, after this little small interruption. <laughs> Through no fault of my own, it's okay. I might say. Yes, it's it, okay. It was entirely mine. Um, <laughs> and this brings me to another good point. <laughs> this one. It is the understanding that we have no right to judge others. We have a right only to love them, and that includes wanting them to be their best. I do not judge anyone for wanting to call Haley. I don't judge Haley for having a ringtone. I don't <laughs> having a ringtone. <laughs> that goes off in the middle of a recording. I don't so, but... Yeah, like, no, like, as if you didn't care so, so much about someone, like, someone that cuts you off in traffic, you don't care if they get better or not. You just kind of want them to get out of your life. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. and, um, or if you totally gave up on someone, I don't know, this would be kind of hard to do, but I guess with family, because you're going to always hope that they're going to be better. But if you do have to like, cut them out of your life, in a way, you're still hoping that they'll be better. But, yeah. like, yeah. No, it's, I mean, that's one of the things that, if you're talking about pointing out with someone like something that is not tolerating someone's behavior, but loving them and tolerating them, 
Um, and then also never judging them and only experiencing that sort of understanding with love. That's a really different way of moving about the world than I think a lot of people think about, right? When we talk about not tolerating a behavior, um, saying, you know, pointing something out to somebody that, that is harmful, we often think about that with judgment. Yeah. And in reality, if you're, if you're acting from a place of love and not acting from a place of judgment, um, that's a lot better. That's a lot easier. It's like, it's so much easier to think about classroom situations. That's uh, all I think where about. It's, it's like, if this kid is not paying attention ever and is always talking and stuff, then you might be tempted to say, well, this kid's just dumb. This kid's stupid. Like, I hate this kid. But like, that would be judgment. Yeah. And it's like, there's gotta be a reason why the kid acts this way. There's maybe something like ADHD or something. And so you can't judge them. It's, it's like hard as that can be sometimes where it's like, I wish this kid wouldn't come to class anymore. Oh no. I mean, I guess you can still just wish that they weren't in your class. There's nothing wrong. But but if, as long as you don't see them as a bad person, it's just that this kid is difficult to um, get along with the other kids in the class or make your class go well. One of the things that I was like learning about when I was learning about trauma-informed teaching is figuring out why this behavior works for this child. Because a child is not going to engage in a behavior unless it works for them. Um, what does it What does it do for them? How is it serving them? What is it fighting off for them, right? So when I have a kid who has an explosion, um, uh, why, why is that happening? Um, and sometimes I can point to myself as the reason, like I can say that the way that I engaged, that wasn't diffusing the situation and I should have realized that. Um, I had that this week and I apologize to the kid. Um, but uh, sometimes it's there's something else going on, there was nothing I had control over, um, but it's still my responsibility and opportunity to create a space where we know that that's not the appropriate and expected behavior, and also I'm creating a space where that behavior doesn't become necessary. Even, th there was somebody who said something, whatever conference I was at, but they, they were like, when you are going to be speaking at a conference, you have to be aware of what time of the day it is to have the best interaction with the audience because is it right after lunch then you're gonna have to interact with them differently if you really want people to pay attention to your presentation so like it, it's for adults too yeah in all kinds of situations and just knowing your people and not judging them that they're not paying attention because they're tired it's after lunch or at the end of the you know it's five o'clock and it's the last presentation of the day some of them just want to go to the bar and um yeah you gotta have the patient i think patience comes a lot into this yeah but that's that's love in in discipline want like knowing people and having a reason for your discipline yeah <laughs> really paying attention to them okay um exercise for the day Ooh. before you criticize someone today think twice if it is out of care and love are you just gonna say something because you hate that person <laughs> <laughs> or are you gonna say something because you really want them to get better yeah, that, that's a good thing for me to remember. I like that. Not that I, I don't know, I, I don't, I don't criticize people to their because I'm still afraid of the critic of criticizing others. I'm afraid of their reaction. But if I know them well, <laughs> yeah. Well, and recognizing that when you're criticizing somebody, making sure you're coming from a place of love, you're not going to have that guilt. You're not going to have that fear of criticizing somebody because you know it's just showing them love. Yeah. So, hopefully, they can take it. Yeah. That's another level of questions. Yeah. So thank you and we'll see you tomorrow.